Now, in question one here, we want to draw the Pascal's triangle and then expand for a plus b to the power of 5. So we didn't do that in the example, did we? We kind of stopped at a plus b to the power of 4. Let's first draw our triangle. So it's 1, 1. The next one is 1. This term's going to be, yep, 2. Always ends with 1. Starts with 1 again. This will be 3. Good. Yep, 3, 1. Next line. 1. This one. 4. 6, 4, 1. Excellent. Now, what's the fifth line going to be? Starts off with 1, that'll be 5, 10, yep, 10, 5, and 1. Exactly. So you can see that to the four of the power of 5, there's going to be 6 terms all together. So what we need to do now is expand that. So remember, we kind of have three steps. First step is to expand that. Second step is to put in the coefficients and the third step was to simplify. So first step, expand that. So we start off with a to the power of 5, b to the power of 0. And we know we're going to end with a to the power of 0, b to the power of 5. So all you need to do is fill in the ones between. Subtract 1, add 1, 4, 1. Subtract 1 from that, add 1 to that, a to the power of 3, b to the power of 2. Subtract 1, add 1, 2, 3. That becomes 1, 4, and we finish with a to the power of 0, b to the power of 5 there. Good. And the second step was, excellent, yeah, just put in the coefficients. So super simple. 1 goes there, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And then lastly, simplify it. So that just becomes a to the power of 5, right? And this will just become b to the power of 5. And really that itself is already quite simplified. And just rewrite it out, simplified, and leave it as that. And you've just done the expansion for a plus b to power 5. In really what was only two lines, which is much, much easier than trying to expand this any other way. So this was for a plus b to the power 5. Let's have a look when we have a negative there instead of a plus. So have you noticed how all the expansions we've been doing has been a plus b? So how do you think we're going to do this expansion if it's negative b? So have a think how we might do that. Let's just start off with, this is going to be our coefficients, right? So 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. This will just be 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, we know we'll be using this line. What we do is we just think about the negative b as the second term. So it's still the first term plus the second term. It's just that in this case, the second term is negative b. And that's kind of how you do any changes in this. So although we've been talking about it as a plus b, you should kind of think about it as a first term plus the second term. So our first term here is a, our second term is minus b. This means that when we expand it, the first term here is just going to be a to the power of 3 and then negative b to the power of 0, like that. And then exactly the same. Subtract 1, add 1. So a to the power of 2, negative b to the power of 1. Same thing, a to the power of 1, negative b to the power of 2 a to the power of 0, negative b to the power of 3. Now exactly the same, once that second term, so negative b, has the power of 3, which is the same as that index there, we stop. All right? So can you see how it's exactly the same, except that instead of having b, we just have negative b as our second term. Now, second step is to put in our coefficients. So 1, 3, 3, and 1. And now, just to simplify. So here, we've just taken a few more steps in simplifying it. So this one just becomes 1, so that becomes a to the power of 3. Negative b to the power of 1 remains negative b, whereas negative b squared, that squared gets rid of the negative, so it just becomes b squared. And this just becomes negative b cubed, because negative cubed is still negative. So once you fully expand that, should get a cubed minus this, plus that, and minus b cubed, finally. 
when you have the first and second term is slightly different, it may take a few more steps in simplification, but that is the only difference there is. So that's how we do negatives. Let's have a think about what we do if we have 2a or 3a or whatever, instead of just a by itself. First thing is, it's power of three. So let's work out our Pascal's triangle. So one, 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 two, one. We should know this pretty well by now. One, three, three, one. And that's what we're gonna use. So to expand this, we use the same thing that I taught you before, which is that this is gonna be our first term. And this is gonna be our second one. So instead of just having a to the power of three, b to the power of zero, I'm gonna be having 2a to the power of three, b to the power of zero. Subtract one, add one. 2a to the power of two, b to the power of one. Subtract one, add one. 2a to the power of one, b to the power of two. And then finally, we have b to the power of three there, so we know we stop. And then coefficients. So one, three, three, one. And now we need to simplify that. I think the easiest way to simplify this is let's just expand these brackets first. So two power three gives us eight, a cubed, b zero, but b to the power zero is just one. Here we have two squared, which gives us four, and a squared. Two a power of one is just two a, and two a power of zero is just one, so that just becomes b cubed there. Done that, let's simplify more. So we can just multiply these two numbers in. So you end off with this finally. All right, so exactly the same principles. Our only difference is that we have 2a here instead of a. And what's really important, because I think this is where a lot of students go wrong, is make sure you put your brackets here. So you have to have bracket, bracket to the power of three. Because if you don't and you just write, for example, 2a to the power of three, can you see how you're gonna get yourself confused and forget to make that two to the power of three and make it eight? Because when you're rushing, it's a really easy mistake to make. So remember for these expansions, brackets are your best friend. Well, how about when we're working with fractions? So it's the same principle, but a little bit more difficult in our simplification, that's all. So Pascal's triangle here is going to be using one, three, three, one, this line as well and we're gonna expand that. And all we're gonna do is take this as our first term and take that as our second. So we'll have a to the power of three and bracket one on a to the power of zero. Next one will be two and one. So once again, these brackets here, important. One to the power of two. And then we have zero and then we have to the power of three so we know we stop and then put in our coefficients, one, three, three, one. And now to the bit that's a little bit more difficult, so our expansions. So as previously, I think the easiest thing to do is to just work with the brackets first. So in this bracket, power of zero, it just becomes one. This, just power of one, so it remains one on a. This is one on a squared, so it becomes one on a squared there and that a just becomes cubed. So expand the brackets first and then simplify by multiplying together. So nothing you can do here, but look for what you can cancel. So can you see how that a can cancel with one of those a's? And this a here can cancel with one of those a's like that. So finally you should get a to the power of three, that just becomes three a times one, it's just three a. That is three times one on A, so you just get three on A. And finally, that's just one on A cubed. Okay, can you see that? And you can just leave that as is, and that's your expansion. So you can see that where people go wrong is really not gonna be here, is it? Because we know how to expand this, we know how to put the coefficients in. The mistakes you're gonna be making is when we're simplifying it here. And if you just make brackets, expand the brackets first and then simplify everything later, it's the easiest way to make sure you don't make those silly mistakes. Let's have a look at question five here. 
So here we want to expand a to the power of two plus two and to the power of four. So we're going to be looking at this index first, power of four. Let's work out Pascal's triangle first. So that's one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Okay, we haven't done the next line in a little while. So what's it going to be? One, yep, and that's four, good. Six, good, four, and one, finally. Okay, now to expand this, just think about this is our first term that we're expanding and this is our second one. So we have a squared and that whole thing, brackets, to the power of four. And this is two to the power of zero. Following your same patterns, subtract one, add one. So that becomes power three, power of one. Subtract one, add one. Power of two, power of two. Power of one, power of three. And finally, power of zero, power of four. And that two is to the power of four, which is the same as that index there, so we know that we stop. Put in your coefficients, one, four, six, four, one. Let's expand these brackets. So here, remember when we're multiplying the index with brackets, we just multiply them. So two times four is just eight, 2 times 3 gives us 6, 2 times 2 gives us 4, 2 times 1, 2, and power 0 just means equals to 1. So that's how we get to this step here. And now we just do the last step, which is just multiplying these, these coefficients and numbers together essentially. So that gives us 8, 8 power 6, 4 times this 6 gives us 24, 8 power 4, 4 times 8 gives us 32 and 16 there. And you can actually see with that, you just check it's to the power of 4. And yes, we do have five terms there, so it's a good way to check with that.